In lecture 61, we'd like to completely generalize. We showed you, the, you know, how to generalize between the the twofold and threefold screw axis. And here, uh, it's important to actually take it to the four to, to an even number uh, to show you how the pattern changes to to understand the sense of how different uh, screw axis combinations exist depending on whether it's an even or an odd number full fold axis uh, a fold axis. So we'll uh, just uh, finish up our our screw rotations, our screw axes on, in this uh, lecture. So let me uh, outline what our options are here. So recall that uh, we had tau equal to m over n. Oops, that's an n. <laughs> T. And so in this case, tau, of course, can equal zero, uh, but it can equal uh, one fourth T. T. It can equal one half T. So these are the uh, options uh, in the case of a fourfold axis. Remember, this goes to t, and then all these other ones, they're all reductions because I can subtract out t, and I end up with the same options. So I've got three options besides the intrinsic case of the normal fourfold uh, axes. So let's look at 4-1, which is what's shown here. Right, and you can see that because I, uh, again, if we look at our, this is 360 degrees, right, 2 pi. And I've taken it and cut it because, remember, this used to be a cylinder. And so each one of these is 90 degrees or pi over 2, if you will. So each one of these is a pi over 2 segment. So I'm, I, I'm saying, all right, let's start off with a motif over here. I rotate 90 degrees and I go simply, in this case, tau equals one quarter t. And of course you can see that from the subscript here. This tells you that's what you're doing. You can see, see that also by taking the subscript and putting it over this one. That gives you one quarter, right? And so you can see definitely that you end up with a certain sense in this rotation here, like we did in the other case, right? Now, as I go forward, I have the next case where what I'm showing you here is I have uh, in 90 degrees, remember this doesn't change because that's controlled by the fourfold axis. So I go 90 degrees over, but instead of going uh, one or even two, I'm going three. So this is now this case, the three quarter T. So what I'm doing is I am, uh, if you look here, this whole translation, I'll come back to that in a minute is T. And this whole translation then is, is three quarters T. Okay, so let's look at the red ones first, not the orange. What you see is I rotate 90 degrees, I go up three quarter T. I rotate 90 degrees, go up three quarter T, etc. And I'm done because I rotate and go up three quarter, I'll be over here. Okay, but remember that as we had shown before. Uh, there is still translation has to operate in this direction of the screw axis because it's a three-dimensional crystal structure and everything has to be translation uh, has to be translationally periodic. And so, if I have a motif here, it better show up here. So the orange blocks represents T, and same thing here T, and then remember we have to be below and above T here, and then in this case two below. Now you see that this one, which is a uh, four, three which is the three quarter, right? It actually has the opposite sense as we had discussed in the other case where now you could see that this 
has the opposite sense of, of this one over here. Okay? And uh, to uh, make that work, we have the notation that 4, 1 is shown here. Like that. So if you see an odd symbol like that, you know what that is. And 4, 3 is uh, like that. Now notice I haven't uh, done the 4, 2 case. And that's because it's shown here. So here, this is the 4, 2 case. I'm rotating 90 degrees and I go up half of t, which is, you know, uh, 2 fourths t. Same thing, same thing, right? Rotate 90 degrees, go up half a, a t. Rotate 90 degrees, go up half a t. I, I put in the translations. Here is t, so I've got to put in those. Get an orange one through here. Now, if you look at this as a checkerboard pattern, there is uh, sort of two senses, but they're overlapped on each other. Here, I have uh, the case where there's one sense going like this. But on the other hand, if you look at orange, red, orange, remember these are all the same motif. I just drew this this way so you could tell which ones came from the translational periodicity in this diagram. You know, I also have something going this way. Okay, so it actually has two inter interpenetrating spirals that give you uh, basically a checkerboard of, you know, so I got kind of two two other screw racks on top of each other. So um, because it has two senses, the symbol for this one is only drawn like that, or equivalently, <laughs> because it goes both ways, you can draw it this way also. So this is an or situation that doesn't matter, right? So now you start to see why we, it was important for us to do a fourfold, because when you do the odd, you end up with spiral in one sense or the other. So for example, if we go back and think about our, um, our threefold axis, our, our, you know, the cases where we had three threefold axes, and we looked, and these, these guys had opposite sense, right? Now when I went to the fourfold case, right, I actually have, you know, if I look to the sign correct, I don't remember if this is the right sense or not, but that's not what I'm trying to get at here. What I'm trying to get at from this is that uh, notice how these are opposite sense, but then I have now a symmetric one in the middle, right? So I've got the four one, the four uh, three, and the four two. So the even one, you know, is kind of symmetric thing. And I would expect the same thing for the six. I would expect six one, six two, six three, six four, six five. I would expect these to be opposite. I would expect these to be opposite, but I would expect this one to be symmetric. So it's kind of the general pattern and why I wanted to uh, to get you to um, to this. So that should give you all the ammunition you need to understand the screw axes that you'll see developing in the 230 three-dimensional space groups.